Hey troops, welcome to the show, it's Sarn Browning. I always get a lot of questions and concerns about PMCS. How to, what do you need? So I'd like to answer your questions by inviting you to join me today to PMCS this 5 ton FMTV 1083 behind me. What do you need is the easiest part to answer. The vehicle's technical manual and the DA Form 5988 Echo so that you can annotate all the faults and deficiencies that you find while you conduct your preventive maintenance checks and services. Of course, always safety first. Make sure you got the vehicle's chalk blocks placed, have your gloves, eye pro, and some extra rags around so that you don't get that stuff on your hands. Always be in the good habit of making sure that your TM is the right one. This is the M1083. Then we look at our TM, and right there, M1083. So we roll to our table of contents, then we go ahead and we flip. We find that chapter four is our preventive maintenance checks and services. See our page numbers, and let's go ahead and get started. With PMCS, the best thing is to watch your columns. Here is one column, here is your second column, third column, fourth column, and your fifth column. So our first column is gonna tell us that before we start the truck, we need to check the windshield, windshield wipers, the windshield washer reservoir. What are we checking on it? Check windshield for damage that would impair operator's vision. So that first item number tells us to check the windshield, the windshield wipers, and the windshield washer reservoir. Here we see that there's no cracks. It's a little dirty, so we're definitely gonna clean it before we take it out. And now we're gonna check our windshield wipers. Easy way is to pick it up, look at it. There's no cracks in the rubber. It's not broken, it's not dry rotted. We could even take, turn on the truck, spray some windshield washer fluid on it and see how it clears it all off. Now the windshield washer reservoir on the M1083, it's right here on the side, it's marked. We can lift this up, take the cap off. And as we look down in here, this thing needs some windshield washer fluid for sure. So we identified an issue or what we would call a fault, but there's two categories in this sense. There's undocumented and there's documented. This would be an undocumented because instead of writing this down on my DA Form 5988 Echo and complaining to a mechanic that I'm missing windshield washer fluid, this is something that is required of me as the operator. I'm actually going to go into the maintenance bay. I'm gonna ask for blue windshield washer fluid. It's the dilute kind. So I'm gonna put 50% of the blue fluid in and then another 50% of added water. So that first problem is solved. I went ahead and I added it. So see, we still do not have any faults yet. I just added that fluid. I'm not gonna write it down. We're good to go. On to the next. So item number two says before the exterior of the vehicle, we're gonna look underneath the vehicle for signs of fluid leakage, check the front and rear shackles are secure, and then we're gonna verify that the cab air springs are unpinned and the pin is stowed in, stowage in, in the stowage bracket. Sorry, I have a Florida education. So here's where mechanical knowledge comes in really well. So here we have the radiator. It's a radiator hose, nothing leaking, nothing leaking. No coolant leaking from anywhere here. Here's your engine. You see where your oil pan, all the oil settles right here in this, and it bolts to the bottom of your engine. Well, there's a seal in there. It's dry, so that seal is good. And this is your crankcase. So you can see that there's nothing leaking out from there. Things perfectly dry, completely dry, very nice. Look around a little more. I don't see any evidence of any fluid. So now we get back towards the end, transfer case and transmission. So here we're starting to see a little bit of evidence of a class one leak. So this is obviously wet. You can see that it's shiny. This dirt is sticking to it and I can wipe it away and you can see that it's a class two, or it's a class one. Nothing serious. I can look at the seal and see that nothing's running down. But here we see another example of a class two. That is fluid built up that ran down from somewhere and is forming enough, but not enough to drop. See, none of it's dropping down to the ground, but it's it's actual formed up droplet of some type of fluid. So now we have to do some investigation. Let's find out where that came from. You can see that there's a lot on this bolt right here. 
Oh, and that bolt is very loose. But it's just a bracket bolt that holds your exhaust on. So there's no fluid that's going to come from that. That fluid's coming from something behind it. And right there. You can see that there's a seal right here between the two. This is your transfer case, the bottom. So all that fluid has to be coming from right there. We're going to go ahead and annotate a class one on the transfer case or transmission pan. Or if you don't know what it is, go get a mechanic and ask them. Yeah, so the entire gasket on this thing is definitely running a class one in a couple of places. In most cases, we'll do what they call wipe and observe. We'll take the rag, we'll wipe it down, see what it does next week after we drive it a little bit. In that last column on our TM, it says equipment not readily available if. In that description, it also says if class three leakage is evident. Now we have a class one, arguably class two, that doesn't classify as a class three. So we're just going to annotate a slash for a fault. So right now yours should look like this. We were on item number two. There's today's date. It's just a fault, not a deadline. C2 is class two leak on the transmission fluid pan. Excuse my writing. Now here's some additional advice. Now if you're at AIT, please don't do this because you're not supposed to have your phones. But if you're at an actual unit, I would take my phone and I would take a picture of it, maybe even a small, slowly filmed video so that if I had to show a mechanic or if I had to show my supervisor or for my own memory, I could at least have that documentation picture of it. The next thing it's telling us to do is check the front and rear shackles. All it's saying is these things, it's on there, it's screwed in, and my rear shackles are good as well. Now this next one might be a little difficult if you don't know what you're looking at. But this next one says verify the cab air springs are unpinned and the pin is stowed. So this is your cab air springs. This would be it unpinned and that's its stowage location for the pin. So that right there is properly done. So this is a perfect example of using that control find if you have it digitally downloaded to find specific things. Like if you didn't know what this was, you could type it in in the control find and then you could lo get a localized view, be able to find it a lot easier. Asking a supervisor when convenient is another good option or even a mechanic. They are subject matter experts. Number three is telling us to check the engine oil. Here on the driver's side, you can see We've got our options of dipsticks. Got the transmission oil, got our dipstick, got the fill, got the engine oil dipstick. Please remember when checking this to keep your dipstick pointing down. If you turn it up like so, run up on your stick, giving you a false read. I gave it that first wipe, I'm gonna stick it back in. That way I cleaned off whatever old oil was in there. Now I'm gonna get an actual read on it. So here we can see I'm getting kind of low. Now here's another example of an undocumented fault. I'm not going to write down for the mechanics to take care of my job and put some oil in there. I'm going to go right here where it says fill. I'm going to grab a couple of quarts of oil and I'm going to add it to the truck. Our next check is making sure that the engine coolant is between the upper and lower sight glass. With this upper and lower sight glass, when you're looking at it, you can see that the fluid is halfway between your upper sight glass. That's perfect, that's what we want. We know that it's not over full, and we know that it's not, you know, somewhere in between. If it was over full, it's fine, don't worry about it. Once it builds up pressure, this is your overfill release. It's just gonna drain out here a little bit. What you'd want to worry about is if it wasn't visible at all in this window, but was visible in this one, that means it's between here, you gotta add some. The number two and three part are telling you to check for engine oil visible in the engine coolant. Here you can see that this is green. If it was a brownish color, that would, concern, that would be a concern that there's engine oil in your coolant. That would mean that there's a leak somewhere in the engine that it's running into the coolant system. So the next part's talking about your radiator cap. Now make sure you've got your gloves and iPro on for this part especially. And if this vehicle had been running at all today, don't mess with this. However, my vehicle hasn't been running at all, so the fluid inside's not hot. I'm gonna go ahead and push down on this, 
you might hear a little bit of like pressure release and a little bit of fluid might come out. Nothing to concern about. There you've got your rubber ring at the bottom of the cap. That right there needs to be good. And then you've got the actual cap seal. Again, make sure that it's good as well. That it's not dry rotted, cracked, or missing. So this right here is gonna help keep that pressure in the system. That way that fluid will run through the engine and cool it down. So we move on to number five. It's telling us to go around, check our fuel tank. Here we've got our fuel tank, we've got the cap. We're gonna go ahead and take it off and check our strainer. So the strainer has its chain, has a good strainer, there's no rust, it's not dirty, everything's clean. There's fuel inside the tank, we're good to go. On to the next. Number six is that spare tire strap. Now, we're just gonna double check that there's no issues with that spare tire strap and that it's nice and tight. We're gonna grab it, make sure that it's tight, make sure that it's there, that our ratchet's good. Everything that it's describing for you to do, make sure that you do it. The next part's just telling us to check that this is in the, that was cool. Checking to make sure that the spare tire part is in the raised position. So ours is dead center. That's all we had to do. Next part's your cab hydraulic latch. This thing is a cab over, which means that your cab is over top of your engine. So in order to service or check your engine, you have to raise the cab. This right here keeps it locked in, prevents you from going down the road, pressing the brake too hard, and then the cab flying forward. So we looked at the depiction given to us in the TM. Looks just like that. The red part of that actual cab latch is in the end position. We're good to drive down the road safely. So you're kind of seeing the way that the PMCS is going. We're looking at that item number, seeing that it's a before component, and then we're checking that procedure column. And we're just doing every check that it's telling us to do. What we haven't got is enough faults for you yet. So I'm gonna try to make up some faults just so you can see how we're filling this out. So let's go to item number 15 as a good example. It says interior cab components, check the seat belts, uh, check the seat adjustment. So we're gonna say that I try to adjust this seat and it just doesn't adjust. So we're gonna do item number 15, B.2 because that's the item number 15, it's the before part, and then item number two of 15 was what we were checking. Again, today's date, that last part where it says the not readily available if column, it says that it's a deadline. It says that if my seat doesn't adjust forward and backward, that I can't adjust this thing for my comfort, it's a deadline. And then I'm gonna describe it. I'm gonna say seat adjustment, doesn't work. With that X being on there, I now have two options. One, I could find a mechanic and hopefully they can fix it for me the right way. I'm not saying that they could rig it up so that it doesn't slide back and forth somehow. What I'm saying is actually fix it. Maybe it's just something bent. Maybe there's a screw loose and it's not allowing the latch to come out. Whatever they need to do to fix it. Option number two, you could get a circle X from the commander. Let's say I need to dispatch this truck to use on a mission and then bring it back. So the commander could circle the X on the 5988 Echo. Of course, there's other forms that they have to do, like the mechanics have to do a QAQC and things like that, say that they couldn't fix it. And then I turn all that documentation into the commander and the commander says, well, as long as you can reach the pedals and operate this thing safely, I don't see why we can't let you use it for this one time. On your dispatch, on your DA form 5987, they will write the note that they approve it for a one-time operation to go from place X to place Z. So now we've talked about your technical manuals. We've talked about your DA form 5988 Echo. We've talked about the fault status of a slash, the fault status of a deadline, the X, and the fault status of a circle X. If y'all have anything else that y'all need to know or like to ask questions about, Keep in mind that there's going to be more videos to come, but let me know in the comments section.